Today we're talking Barrelcraft Spirits and their newest release, Tale of Two Islands. What can this possibly be? We're gonna talk about that today on the My Bourbon Journey Whiskey Review Channel. Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. So Barrel Craft Spirits for me has become a brand that over the last handful of releases has really thrust themselves back into the spotlight of being a super relevant brand based on the quality of the blends that they have put out. And we're going to talk a little bit about their newest release today, The Tale of Two Islands. We'll kind of get into that a little bit and I can go through that and explain a little bit more about what exactly uh, that is. So let's go ahead and take a look at, again, from Barrelcraft Spirits, their newest release, Tale of Two Islands, and what exactly it is going to offer. So Barrelcraft Spirits and the Tale of Two Islands, this is coming in at 118.22 proof. It is a blend of two different mash bills from the state of Indiana and Maryland. Uh, mash bills on this are gonna be 73% corn, 22% rye, 4% malted barley. It is age stated as five years old and the blends of each are going to be five and six year old Maryland bourbon and five, six and nine year old Indiana bourbon. MSRP on this one's going to come in at right around that $89 price point. So there are a few specs on what this bourbon kind of is. We're going to go through now a little bit about what the Tale of Two Islands was and how this blend kind of came about. So going back to 2018, Barrel had released a rum called Tale of Two Islands. So flash forward, they have now started to finish their bourbons, the blended bourbons in those rum barrels. So the interesting part of the rum was that they finished that rum in a peated Isla single malt uh, barrel. So that was kind of unique. So there should be some potential smoky notes on, on that. But we're gonna dive into that today and find out what the impact of that barrel has on these bourbons. So pretty nice kind of light to medium mahogany type of color. Move the whiskey around in the glass a little bit. So far, really beautiful oils are showing up on that. So hopefully all of that will translate over to both the nose and the palate. So let's go ahead and dive into the nose right now. Boy, so immediately it is a really heavy fruit bomb. Beautiful, beautiful baking spices. Really nice kind of like rich brown or rich burnt brown sugar notes. Probably a little bit of that kind of like rum influence that's coming out there as that. Interesting, a little bit of kind of like a, a hint of a maple syrup on that as well. Even a little bit of like a, an orange marmalade and orange marmalade being that there's the orange influence, but the marmalade oftentimes for me has this slight like spice factor to it. So there's a little bit of that to it. A little bit of the barrel char that's coming through, not heavy. And again, right out of the gate, I wouldn't say there was anything that would be very heavy or any peat note that I'm getting on this. So for anybody who hears peat, I wouldn't let that sway you from this. So far for me, there's basically none of that on the nose for me outside of maybe a hint of barrel char, but not the peated side of that. What I would say is the rum characteristic of it is starting to kind of take over. A little bit more of that kind of tropical fruit note that's there. It's definitely letting you know that there is some of that rum influence. It's not dominating the nose by any means. It feels like it's really well done so far. Honestly, it's got such a beautiful nose that it almost feels a bit like a, a fall scented candle, to be honest. It's got a lot of those kind of those robust notes while there's still some of that like sweetness, some of that spice that you might get from a, a fall candle. More importantly, let's see how this one's going to taste. Cheers. Boy, again, again for me, I would say it is very much like a, a fall cocktail. There's that sweetness right up front, followed quickly by 
those beautiful, beautiful baking spices. And then it kind of translates back to some of the sweetness part, like as the finish begins to develop. So a really nice wave of flavors that you're getting uh, on this uh, whiskey so far. Again, a lot of fruit notes. Um, there's something that is standing out again for me with this being more of an orange, orange marmalade. Little hint of an apricot that I'm also picking up on this. Little bit different, not always something I get with kind of a, a rum finish, but there's something about it having a slight apricot note to it. Maybe a little hint of, of a dryness as well, maybe coming from that, that single malt, that cask that's there. Maybe there's something about that in the peated part of it that is causing a little bit of that kind of dryness that's there. But overall, not enough dryness to be you know, off-putting or anything like that. It's just a little hint of, of a dryness. Again, a little bit more of that kind of barrel influence on this one. Really kind of interesting is with the analogy I'm using of this being kind of like a fall cocktail, I'm getting a little bit of this, this chocolate, but also a little bit of this like chocolate and like a bitters or like a chocolate and a walnut bitters. So it is feeling like a lot of, of a cocktail in a glass to me in terms of what the flavor profile of this is. So again, the balance of this for me is really interesting and unique. I love the sweetness, the spice, back to the sweetness. The, again, it's that really nice wave of flavors that's on this. You're getting a little bit, of, again, of that rum influence, but it's not heavy. And for me, I'm going to say really nothing having to do with, with peat at all for me. Maybe there's some of the barrel influence, but I wouldn't equate that to, to a peated uh, type of flavor profile. You know, and if we're sticking with the theme of, of it feeling like a, a, a fall cocktail, maybe you could call this like a smoked old fashioned, something along those lines. There are a little bit of those attributes to it where you're, you are getting some of the, the barrel influence. Again, a little bit of that smoke mixed with that great baking spice and sweetness that it has from the rum. So a very interesting blend, these waves that it has is something cool. And it's always something I appreciate in a, in a whiskey when it allows you to kind of explore what that whiskey has and what it's doing and maybe what it will do. It's something I find to be kind of fascinating and a really interesting uh, style or what what I would think of as a really interesting whiskey overall. As we kind of get into the, the finish part of it, again, I'd maybe stick with the theme of like a smoked old fashioned. Uh, again, there's that dryness. Maybe you could kind of equate that to a little bit of that walnut or walnut bitters, something like that. The orange marmalade is definitely there. Again, more barrel influence, but a very interesting whiskey overall and one that I kind of look forward to sitting down with a little bit more and just kind of exploring what this whiskey really has to offer. So there you go, guys. If this was something that you had heard about or are interested in, you know, definitely give the Tale of Two Islands from Barrel a try. I think it's going to be something that you'll find as interesting as maybe what I've kind of described today. And, and if it is and you kind of get into it, come back, let me know your thoughts on this one overall. And also, were you one of the people that got their rum back in 2018 and now maybe interested to find out their blend that they're finishing in those, uh, those rum barrels at this point in terms of what that flavor profile may be. So hopefully this helped a little bit, but I, I wanna say thank you guys so much for tuning in today to another one of my reviews. Greatly appreciate all of that. Uh, do me a favor, uh, on your way out, make sure you hit that subscribe button leave a comment, thumbs up, trying to build the channel up a little bit more kind of going into 2024. So thank you guys again, really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to follow me, you can on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, X, whatever that is these days. If you'd like to help support the channel and become part of the Mash and Journey Whiskey Club, make sure you check out that Patreon link in the description below. A lot of other good things down there for you as well. So with that being said, thank you guys so much. Remember, it's about the journey and not the destination. Cheers.